it's weird that it didn't happen when I first put the boiler on, but it's happened now. Got that out, the boiler was running, and I've had to shut it down because obviously it was pluming all out from the bottom of the condense trap. I'm gonna clean this up, put it back together, and hopefully that sorts the problem out. Good morning everyone. It is Monday the 24th of November. Just coming up to 11 a.m. and we are about to go back to that Pot 10 Performer 30HE which I went to on Saturday night where I thought it was the fan or the air pressure switch. It was neither. I'm suspecting a faulty PCB so I've got one with me. Let's go inside, let's have a look and hopefully, fingers crossed, that sorts it. And if you haven't already, Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It's getting a very busy time of the year and it does take quite a lot of effort to obviously go to work and then do the editing as well. So any sort of likes and subscribes are very much appreciated. And also for you guys as well, something for you is if there's any of the affiliations that I work with that you're interested in, such as Unilite, you've got Tool Monster Store, you've got Rhino Trade Insurance, you've got Powered Now as well for your job management stuff. The links to all the brands that I work with and all the companies that I'm affiliated with are all in the description to the video. So they have various different offers on at different times of the year, depending on when you're watching this video, but there will always be something there for you if you're after a bargain. But let's go and have a look, see what's going on with this boiler. Oh, someone just pulled up here. I don't know if there's anything to do with me. I don't think so. No, because I don't know what, if I'm allowed to be parked where I'm parked. But anyway, Let's go and let's try and get this boiler back up and running. And then I've got a couple of other breakdowns to go and look at as well today. Right, board is exposed. Here is the new one. So part number, in case anyone is interested, 5112380. Let's get this swapped out. Right, before I put the cover back on, let's give it a test. Right. Uh, can someone run a hot tap, please? So can uh, someone open a hot tap? Bingo. Job done. So you got to remember on that boiler, when you change the PCB over, it doesn't look exactly the same. Because it's an updated PCB, some of the connections are in the wrong place. Not wrong place, they're in different places. But all of the connections from the old board will go onto the new board. You don't need any other accessories or any other chips or anything like that. But just keep an eye of it. What I do is I just take a photo of it on my phone first so I know where all the connections are because they're labeled. You've got like F1, F2, F3, A1, A2, A3, etc. They will, fit on their respective connections but just in case you're not sure where each one goes just take a quick photo of the pcb before you start undoing all the connections and then put it all back together and bingo it's all working now i'm just trying to decide where i'm going to go to next i do need to pick up some materials for a job as well but i've also got a couple of other jobs to get to as well so i'm just going to quickly make a few phone calls decide where i'm going to go next and then i'll see you guys at the next job all right next one i've got this glowworm heat only boiler which keeps coming up with a F83 fault. When I came in here first, that pressure was on zero. So I've turned the pressure up, 
but that doesn't sound like it's spinning. It's kind of humming, but stopping and starting, stopping and starting. So I reckon that pump might be seized up, which is why we're not getting the circulation. That's why that keeps coming with the F83 fork card. So I'm going to try and open up the bleed screw in there. It looks like someone's had a go at it before. You can see on the bleed screw, there's some marks on it. So let's open that up, see if I can free that pump up and then go from there. Right, yeah, we've got both zone valves open. Let's see. Right, I've got water coming out of there. Yeah, the pump's not spinning. Let's try and get it going. There we go. I'm going to put the bleed screw. This sounds quite airy. Alright, well, the pump's spinning, so now just got to wait for the boiler to fire up. It's glugging a bit as well, so there is definitely air in that. All right, I'm gonna let that run. We'll come back to this to see what's going on. It's just a massive airlock. That's been hissing away. I've shut the heating zone valve, the heating demand, and I've just got hot water on at the moment. So we've just got that zone valve, that zone valve open because we've got two inverted cylinders here linked together. And I'm literally just putting the pump speed up and down, up and down, up and down, and I can hear the air is trying to get out. I'm just waiting for that big glug. And once it comes out, then I know the boiler will fire up again. Yeah, so I'm literally just, that's what I'm doing. Speed one, speed three. I can hear the air moving around, just, that AAV went crazy a few minutes ago, which is good. Just need to get this air out and then I know it will start running again. So that last one, I've left it for today because I haven't got time to try and clear the airlock today. I'm going to be back probably on Thursday, which is the next available, available day that I've got to try and work on it. I'm hoping it might even clear itself because, well, two obvious things were pressure was on zero, pump was seized. I sorted those two issues out. As I was jockeying the pump, meaning turning the speed down, turning it up, down, up, down, up, down, trying to push the air out. I did get quite a lot of air out of it, but still there's loads of air in there. Bled some of the radiators, got air out of there. So I'm hoping that by Thursday, that what, today's Monday, so we've got three days and then obviously a fourth day. It might even clear itself by then because the AAVs are working. If not, then I've got to go back there and try a few things out. Next one I'm here to look at now is an F28 on a valent eco fit heat only. Ignition lockout, it could be condensed, it could be no gas, it could be electrodes, it could be electrode lead, who knows? Let's go in and have a look. Right, so we've got F28 on here. Let's do a reset. I can't remember if you've got to hold this in to reset it or once. There you go, clear faults. Now the tenant said that there, it runs for about 20 seconds and then shuts itself off. So I don't know if a demand is calling at the moment. Is it trying to do something? I can't tell, because normally one of these would be, oh, do you know what, let's just put it in in chimney sweep mode, there we go. It's not hot water, it's nothing. No. Right, it's stuck on S3, so it's not going to ignition. 
I can hear it sparking inside. Right, let's go and see what, let's take the case off and see what's going on. Right, we've got the U-gauge on there. Let's put it back into chimney sweep mode and see if the gas valve's even opening. Because to me, I'm suspecting a faulty gas valve because I can hear it sparking, but it's not doing anything else. Yeah, that's not enough. Yeah. It's at S3. And it's not... No, nah, it's not opening. I mean, I can try the old trick. If the solenoid is stuck, maybe give it a little knock. Right, I'm going to make a quick phone call to Valent just to double check if there's anything, well, what to check, whether it's the gas valve or the PCB, because it could be one or the other. So I just want to double check whether, what checks Valent need me to do to determine whether it's the gas valve or the PCB. Your call will be connected right. shortly. This is strange, hang on. Because I just reset it and it just fired back up again, but it started giving um, block condense. I just took the condense off and that was fine, but let's have a look again. Let's try that again. Yeah, so now it's making bubbling noise. And we're, I'm going to clear the condense in a minute, but it did fire up. There. So it's fired up, but it locked out to F83 just a moment ago. So right, let's right, let's cancel that. Let me clear the condense out, and then we'll test it again. Yeah, that will give you an F28. Yeah. So it's not the gas fire. I don't know if. That sorted itself out by when I knocked it, but just spoken to the tenant and he's said to me that the last few days they've been hearing that glugging sound. So it's weird that it didn't happen when I first put the boiler on, but it's happened now. Got that out, the boiler was running and I've had to shut it down because obviously it was pluming all out from the bottom of the condensed trap. I'm going to clean this up, put it back together and hopefully that sorts the problem out. We're back online. Now I've just got to do a gas safety here. And then we're out of here onto the next one. Right, how weird was that fault? Because I went in there, I popped the condensate hose off first and nothing came out. Fired the boiler up, no gurgling, no bubbling. I could hear the electrodes sparking. And then we tested it with the U-gauge. It wasn't moving. But it did end up being a block condensate. Coincidence? I got no idea, but it's working. I did my gas safety on it, highs and lows, it's all good. Maybe where the boiler hadn't been running for a few days, maybe the solenoids did get stuck and that was probably as a result of the condensate being blocked up and not being able to fire. Who knows? All I know is that it's all working now, so that's good. Now, I'm at a job where I don't know if I'm going to record anything in here because I don't know exactly what it is that I need to look at. It's a relative of Signature Installations who's on Instagram. If you're looking for high-end bathrooms in the London area. Check his page out, Signature Installations. I'll put his at up here. I actually fitted his boiler and I did a YouTube video on it as well, yeah. But this is one of his relatives. They've bought a, a quite a large house in Chigwell and apparently there's some radiators getting hot, some not getting hot. It's an open vented system. So I don't know exactly what the problem is. I don't think they know what the problem is either because they've probably just inherited this now this is the only tricky thing, when a customer inherits a fault and there's no sort of history behind it, it makes it more difficult for me to sort of diagnose or determine what the issue could be. So I am literally going in blind with a fresh pair of eyes. If it was like the previous owners or whatever, and they could have said, yeah, we've had this issue for a while, or this is a new issue, and blah, 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 but 
this is fresh and it's a big house. Apparently it's about 20 odd radiators. So I don't know if this is a balancing issue. Maybe it's a circulation issue. Maybe the, I don't know. Let's just go in and have a look. Right, nothing too, well, nothing interesting to report on that job for the moment. It just needed a lot of balancing, which I managed to get it balanced, got everything getting nice and hot, but there will be a power flush coming, not until the new year. On that note, Good night, God bless, and I'll see you guys on the next video. I'm working tomorrow, so I'll make some more cards. Oh, tomorrow's job is an interesting one. Another relay job where I've got to try and separate underfloor heating from radiators. So watch out for that one.